Welcome back to my garage. Last time we did some runs with just the exhaust stub and then with the megaphone in its original form. And we lost like 3-4 horsepower. Now we're gonna test with an extended megaphone. Added 140 millimeters of length to the header. It's extendable and now it's as extended as it can be. I can shorten it. Let's do a few runs with this and see where it takes us. I've also replaced the signal cable from the your dyno box to the power supply for the retarder with the shielded cable. Crossing fingers for no interference this time. There's something going on with the auto start function still. What? I've located a problem. Watch this when I turn on the retarder. You'll see a yellow light appear here. But you won't hear any sound. It's sitting at 50%. You can see the light is on. Now watch while I move this wires a little bit. Gotta turn it off, it's smoking. <laughs> it's the same problem as with these two coils. The wires are broken all the way in there where it butts up against the frame. Not an easy fix, it seems impossible to get these coils off the cores and do repairs back there. Might have to disable this pack of coils too and wait for the next pack to fail. <laughs> I've disconnected the coil with the failed connection. And now it's working. The joy of aluminium wires. I've passed a thousand US dollars in fuel alone now. Your support on Patreon really helps. This wouldn't have been possible without that. Thank you. That almost broken, but not quite, but sometimes broken wire. That's probably been causing issues for a long time now. I'm glad I found it. And it made me aware there might be other issues on this retarder. Might be a good idea to look for something in better shape. Anyways. The results are in, we're still losing power with the megaphone. The green line here is the short megaphone, the blue one is the long megaphone, and this is our baseline. We did not get a good reading above 12,500 RPM for the long megaphone though, and it does seem like it's rising. I think it's a good idea to raise the starting point for the dyno run and see if there's more power up here. Like maybe we're getting into the tuned area, who knows? Let's find out. This is the day after that previous run by the way. And while the water is heating up, I'm gonna explain something. There's a lot of comments about this. Lots of people have commented that I should do my dyno runs in the opposite direction. Saying that will give the right results and how I do it will not because of built up inertia in the brake. At least that's what I think they're implying. First of all, the your dyno software is capable of doing much more than what I'm doing right now. Kind of doing the dumb version. I start at high RPM and I start applying more and more force, like a steeper and steeper hill. There's no PID loop involved, which means I don't have to tune anything. With a PID loop tuned, I can program whatever RPM curve I want. If I wanted to go up and down or say simulate a run at Bonneville where you go through the gears and then stay in the last gear for a really long period of time, I can do that but not right now, later. I could start my runs low and end them high, but I really like the auto start stop function. I don't have to fiddle with any keys on the keyboard. Having the run auto start low and then auto stop at high RPM would mean it would just take off when the brake disengages at high RPM and full throttle. 
which might be damaging to something. It's safer to start high and then go low. It doesn't make a difference. It would make a difference if my load cell was mounted to the brake, like they usually are, and it was measuring how much force was needed to keep the brake from rotating. It's mounted to my engine. I'm recording how much force is needed to keep my engine from rotating. Any built up inertia in the brake just makes the brake work harder. It doesn't make a difference for the engine. Look at it this way. Let's imagine there's two engines connected here. This one with the load cell and another one with no load cell. Both doing the same thing. We're in a run, the brake is applying force and trying to stall them down. Now that second engine, that would be like a continuous stream of built up inertia. But it wouldn't make a difference though. The brake would just have to work harder. There would be no difference in the reading here. We're measuring the force here, not at the retarder and not at any other position. soft that thing it's just circulating I'm glad I'm wearing the mask my eyes are burning probably not the best atmosphere to breathe right now in here it actually looks like we've gained some power now with the same setup as yesterday which is weird this is just a horsepower curve. We'll pull up the torque curves later. Let's pick just a, like a middle one here. Like that's reading the highest, but it's also staying in the middle all the way here. So let's pick that one. The trend is the same as last time. You can see it's rising here. Notice pressure is lower with the long megaphone. That makes sense because it's sucking mixture through. Kind of confirms it working. The engine has less time to build pressure when that is sucking like emptying the cylinder. Let's add in five more degrees of timing and see what happens. Did not like 25 degrees at all for some reason. The dyno just like abruptly shut it down. 15 degrees was okay though. We'll have a look at the numbers, but first I'm gonna perform a test run without the, the pipe here and just see where it's at now. Did occur to me that we're running a new batch of fuel today, completely fresh from a sealed can. That could have made a difference to the numbers. Here are the results from a bunch of runs so far. There's some weird stuff going on here. When I was testing 25 degrees of ignition advance, any one of those no pipe runs. You can see how horsepower just drops off rapidly. The red graph is the old baseline without the pipe. And this graph is the new baseline without the pipe. This green rising one is with 25 degrees of ignition advance. The green more flat one is with the long megaphone. This purple one that is with the short megaphone. And the black one that is with 15 degrees of ignition advance versus 20 for uh, all the other runs except for this one which has 25. It's a few days later. I'm in this uh, involuntary forest fire and other catastrophes task force thing and uh, we've been practicing uh, putting out forest fires for a few days. It is an awesome thing to be able to help out when there's a forest fire or flood or other catastrophe but it's not my choice. I'm forced to do it and that really rubs me the wrong way. 
Regardless, I've been thinking about some stuff and I've actually been in here and I've been scribbling down some thoughts so to not forget them. Typical of me to forget what I was thinking about and just continue testing something else. I think maybe I'll show you in the graphs why I think so, but I think we're, we're running so much fuel we're actually we're fouling the plug and losing spark at some points in some of the runs, especially when the plug has been used for a little while and it starts gumming up with uh, residue, combustion residue. This won't make much sense at all for you because it's just for me, but uh, the sensible thing would be to lean it out and that would probably gain us some power. That would certainly be the gasoline way. We're not running gasoline though, we're running methanol and nitromethane. And methanol in itself has a pretty high octane rating. It can take a lot of ignition timing and compression. If you run it really rich though, the octane rating gets a lot higher. I think it's part due to the fact that so much fuel will cool the whole combustion chamber. And part because free radicals in the combustion process is kind of broken up by the fresh fuel composition versus if there's not much fresh fuel there and it chains up with the other stuff and creates detonation inducing compounds. Let's have a look at the plugs first and then I'll show you the graphs and tell you why I think we're fouling the plug. It doesn't look like a typical fouling plug to me. But I think we're fouling from all the fresh fuel, not from like oil buildup. I found something. This has come loose. Here's a comparison between the longer megaphone with 20 degrees of ignition timing and the longer megaphone with 25 degrees of ignition timing. You can see there's some weird stuff going on with the 25 degree ignition advance curve here. This makes more sense when you look at the results versus time. Both runs starts off in a normal way and then those 25 degree ignition advance curves just plummets at around uh, two and a half seconds. For some strange reason, after two seconds, this just loses all power and plummets. I'm thinking this might be ignition related. We have a way to find out. You've seen my ignition mate before. With this, we can, amongst other things, monitor consistency of spark current and voltage of the spark while it's running. We'll set this up and put a camera on it and we can see what happens in one of those plummeting runs. A side effect of setting this up is that we'll probably just get perfect readings now. The universe will keep us from troubleshooting. I kind of forgot the punchline of what I was talking about. We need to figure out if the ignition system is up to it, running really rich. Because going leaner to gain power is probably not the way forward. With methanol and nitromethane you can go really rich before you start losing much power. This means you can up the compression a lot and gain much more power than what you're losing from running rich. Kind of the way for alcohol fuels. I'm telling you this because I was thinking we need to start leaning down the mixture and see what happens. But uh, I think we should machine a new head. We're running 14.5 to one compression now which is my go-to compression for most 50 cc two strokes on gas we can probably run 18 to 1 maybe 20 to 1 22 to 1 who knows we'll find out i think that's the way forward not going leaner now let's see how the ignition system is coping Hard to tell during the run, I'll have to watch back the footage, but I think spark current was dropping on the last run there, when it plummeted. You can see how this line is linear, and here's the last run, which started plummeting. You can see it suddenly dropped from 9,500 9 and, and then down to 7,500 in a split second. This was the last of four runs. Might be the plug getting wet. So far we haven't really gotten anywhere with the megaphone. More research required. I want to try higher compression first. I'll machine up a couple of heads with higher compression. And we'll see how that works. And it's likely that we need to strengthen spark somehow. Next time. See you next time.